we are off. I'm making sure I uh, <laughs> took the gas uh, pump out of my car before I drove off. That's happened before. That was the uh, first three scratched episodes of this podcast. Let's see, I'm at a shell, and I am in Grandview, Texas. All that's in Grandview is this really cute subway. I took a picture of it. It's this little shack where you can see all the work trucks from around the area, all the all the men meet up, and they have their five dollar footlongs for lunch. I bet it's kept them. In, I bet it's kept conversation alive in Grandview for a good like. I don't know, two decades, you think? Subway's been pumping out there. Hey, man, have you had this chicken bacon ranch? If you haven't had chicken bacon ranch yet, man, you, you know, Steve, you've been eating meatball marinara for about 15 years. When are you going to come on over to the chicken bacon ranch side? So meanwhile, the weird, like, uh, the HVAC guy in the area is, like, eating his veggie sub for the 3,000th time. <laughs> I'm on my way to Austin. I've been commuting a lot lately. I've been averaging about 3,000 miles every week for um comedy purposes and then this last week i had to do pest control got booked down in houston got as soon as i got home my boss was like want to go back down to houston and do one job real quick yeah sure i love i love passing by 30 buckies in one week it's great for my digestive tract and my mental and physical health because you know when you pass a buckies you you gotta go to Buckies! You want sea foam coolers? You want a sea foam colored uh, smoker? You want to? Do you want um? You want sea foam colored beef jerky? Do you do you want to? Do you want to get gas with three hundred other people at the same time? Sense of community. You gotta go to Buckies. We're, we're going to Buckies. We have to go to Buckies. Oh, we're going to Buckies, right? been doing well Buc- no I haven't Bucky's is the only place where I spill I, I feel good about only spending forty dollars it's the only place if I walk out of a Bucky's and I'm like 4297 it's pretty good it's pretty good anywhere else I spend more than 40 bucks I cringe but at Bucky's if I spend under a hundred and more than 40 I'm like that was solid hmm and I like that gets you like one good plastic bag worth of just shit, and I mean shit in every sense of the word because you don't buy anything as sustenance from a Bucky's. They got good chopped beef. They got good chopped beef sandwiches, Phil. They got good chopped beef sandwiches, and now they're doing pulled pork. Great. I'd like you to imagine Bucky's pigs. I'd like you to imagine Bucky's cows. They got good sandwiches. I don't know. I'm being a pessimist about. Texas's greatest gym right now and I should probably stop before I get my entire home state mad at me it's beautiful I love I will say 3,000 miles through Texas every week is is it's very very pretty it's like you're like it's the same thing over and over no like the sky changes everything in Texas day in and day out one patch of highway always looks different never going at the same time of the day or night so It's also been raining a shit ton, so that's caused a lot of... I'm not a weather channel. I don't know what the fuck I'm talking about right now. I I tried to find something of actual sustenance to talk about before I started this, and all I could really pull up was (laughs) that America... We're flipping shit right now because of our infrastructure. I think it's pretty good. Do you think this video's steady right now? Do you think it's jolting around a lot? It's kind of shaking a little bit. Maybe infrastructure in America could be better. Maybe if all of our cops stopped beating people into a pulp on top of the roads, the roads would last longer. Oof. Philip, go off. Wow. Hot take there. Um. No, the I think it's I think it's a good I think it's a good topic though. The infrastructure in America. They, they were saying how the infrastructure in America, the, the crumbling is going to cause further economic collapse in our country. Like further economic collapse. Can you call it a collapse if, it, it's, if it's not all happening at once? I think what, what's happening is America is currently having one of those trips. Like, I mean, when you fall, like a tree, America has tripped over a tree branch. And it's, it's, it's been trying to keep itself from falling by doing these weird maneuvers and spins. Like that one thing where the hand touches the ground and it's like, 
I'm driving, I'll stop. <laughs> America has been, there is no collapse. A collapse happens all at once. America has been in a, uh, America has AIDS. It's just been a slow, it's been a slow death. I think the economy is doing well, other than rapid inflation apparently is happening. Apparently, Sherwin-Williams Paint Company said they're going to go up on all their paint prices by 7%. That's crazy. Sher not Sherwin-Williams. Not, 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 not my living room. I was really looking to paint my living room. I don't own a house. Fuck Sherwin-Williams. Uh, what else did they say was going up? It was like... For, oh, used car sales. Uh, this is a brand new used car. I think I paid about 15% more than I should have for it. But it was still a great deal for the current market. So I understand that one. Uh, the minimum wage, though. When it, we, we're all talking about inflation. We're all talking about the infrastructure sucking. Uh, Joe Biden wants to create, you know, like, I think it was close to... I'm not going to say a number because I just don't know, but millions of jobs basically would be created if we pass this bill to pump $3 trillion into our infrastructure. And in return, the economy would see an uptick because of access to local and small businesses. I can vouch for that. I used to live in Huntsville and the, the roads there are shitty, but it never stopped me or my fat ass from going to, I don't, Sweet, Sweet Eats, Pig, whatever the hell the name of the little restaurant was like yeah my my car bottomed out every time i went there but maybe there are some people it would help get there a little bit quicker maybe they should raise the uh, minimum wage the government also currently describes alcoholism as is, any, is anyone having more than eight drinks a week you're like phil why you sound so angry saying that because i have more than eight drinks a week i don't think i'm an alcoholic i go days i go i go i go weeks sometimes without drinking but usually <laughs> At one point in the week, I have about eight drinks. In one sitting, maybe. Who knows? Maybe it's two sittings of four. Maybe it's three sittings of two, two, three. You don't know how I... I don't... They, 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 um, America has deemed eight drinks a week as alcoholism. But they've also deemed the minimum wage for living, seven twenty-five. So I don't know if the same person's making those fucking decisions, but... The, I'll tell you what. How about this, America? If you raise the minimum wage and I could afford a jet ski... Maybe I wouldn't have to drink so much fucking alcohol to have fun. Philip Garcia, 2024. That's all I'm saying. I'm not even going to be of age yet to run for president. But uh, put me in charge of the economy. Start giving out stipends of quarter ounces. People will be happy. They'll love me then. They'll be like, ah, you know, me and my family, we can't eat this week. And we got, we got kicked out of our apartment. <laughs> but... We do have this quarter ounce of weed, and it keeps our minds off the sadness, but we're just, we're, we're hungry more than anything. God, we're so hungry. But then we have SNAP, so that's like, see, my, my program is covered. Feels free weed, gets completely blanketed, and, and the, the, the worries of it are covered by SNAP and EBT. So, not, if you think government cheese was bad, it's, it's not nearly as bad if you're on government wheat, so at least it has that. I'm talking so well right now. Props to me. I'm driving through like a cornfield on both sides. You can see it up here. Put your hands on the wheel, Phil. I've done this before. There's been two podcasts where I have scratched them. I have a very, very uh, high high expectations for myself. This this was the bar. <laughs> This, this was the bar I was looking for. I'm driving down to Austin right now. I have a show in Temple, Texas on Saturday. I believe I'm headlining. Uh, I don't know what time. This will be out after that. It doesn't even matter. Why did I fucking say it? But I've been driving down here, and then I've been, I've been getting booked all over Texas recently. So it's been a, it's been a hoot and a holler. That's the only appropriate uh, turn of phrase I could think of that to describe a good time in Texas. Hoot and holler, a hoot and holler, and a yeehaw, man. This uh, I just got this car, and the average speed on it is already like 48 miles an hour, which is really, really fast for an average speed of a vehicle because it's driving 75, 80 miles an hour everywhere. It gets great gas mileage, though. This is okay. I was talking about something special, and then I wasn't. I had a mono flare up recently. I had a mono flare up. 
I got mono last year real bad for the first time ever. I was down for two months. I would say I was down one month completely, like a month and a half in bed. I'm talking not moving. My throat looked like a World War I Verdansk war field. Mines went off. That's what it looked like in there. It was so bad. I couldn't eat, couldn't drink. I lost like 20 pounds. Found it all. Don't worry. Um, and then th I guess mono can flare back up if you're highly stressed or your immune system's been taking a hit. But about a week and a half ago, my immune, like my, my immune system spanked me, basically. I got mono all over again. Uh, not like as hard as I did the first time, but it was it was oddly familiar. I hate that they, there are things that feel familiar to your body. That, like the things that suck that feel familiar. It's such a weird... Is that wisdom? <laughs> like is wisdom, is wisdom knowing pain and what it's going to feel like? I went through a breakup recently too, and I was like... Ah, this familiar feeling of loneliness. Is that wisdom? Is wisdom the, like, what kind of, what kind of emotion is it when you're sad, but you also get the familiarity of it? So, like, it's a nostalgic, a nostalgic sad. I don't know. Breakup, breakup was strange. It's because, like, you think about all your other monumental breakups, and you're like, it's like you're all in the room together, like Aang from the Avatar. You're, you're talking to your, your ancestors of breakups. It's like, yeah, I remember when 16-year-old Phil was real broken up about that girl. 21-year-old Phil was broken up about that girl. Now 25. Those are all five years apart. I have like a serious relationship, I guess, every five years. Codependency. Yeah. What, what brought that up? Uh, the change of uh, mono. Yeah. I got spanked. Spanked by my mind. I was like, yes, daddy. Spank. Spank me my immune system I think that makes that makes uh, <laughs> me and my immune system have like a BDSM relationship uh, my immune system is clearly the dom here and I'm the sub uh, you know it's like oh oh oh, oh okay you want to come over again tonight I guess I have to say yes by our contracts laws you have to you know fuck me up but um, the cop I always get nervous. Um, it's going to fuck me up. Yeah, the, the immune system's got to come over. Oh, are you going to come over? Okay, that's fine. You're going to spank me? Okay, that's fine. You can spank me. Just please, God, just don't do the candle wax again this time. It kept me in bed for two months. That's what me and my immune system got going on. Oh, the ambient noises of driving in a crumbled infrastructure. Ah, uh, come on, Joe. Come on, Joe. Fix the roads, Joe. We need you out here, Joe. Just on 30 fucking five. If we could get 35, 35 east and, if we could get 35 south and whatever the hell it's called. If we could get this fixed, that'd be great. That'd be really nice. It's been, it's been a decade. It's been a decade. Can we do a crowdfund thing for this? Can we get a GoFundMe for fucking I-35? What if everyone near I-35 just dropped, just dropped what they were doing for a weekend and came out and did whatever the fuck we needed to do? What's crazy about the fucking highways in Texas is that as soon as we fix them, as soon as we get them up to where we wanted them, it took us so long that the infrastructure is now too small to support the big economy that is, has flourished here. Like in DFW, they finished 121, 183, all that crazy shit, and then as soon as they finished it, we were the fastest growing metroplex in the United States. It's like people got word that we got a good highway, so they moved here. It works. We don't have bad that bad of traffic. Austin doesn't even have that bad of traffic. Uh, I would say it's on par with Dallas, if not better than Dallas. Fort Worth? Uh, people are pretty common for it. Everyone's got a lip and a cigarette in their mouth, so it's just there. They're just, you know, hey, man, that's what we do. You know, follow the long white line. That's all you got to do about it. Fort Worth flipped blue for the first time since 1968 this year. I thought that was really interesting. I think it's a, uh, I think it's pretty clear that there's just like a younger, a younger generation, a bigger, younger generation now in DFW. And there's also a, an educated generation now, I think, <laughs> in uh, Fort Worth. I don't know. It still feels very, very like uh, homey, traditional. I wouldn't say conservative, but cozy. Yeah, I, I, I love Fort Worth. That's why I'm going back and forth so much. 
I'm about to be done and be down here in Austin full time, and that's going to be a blast. Austin is a shit show. Austin is a shit show. Uh, it, it, I, I now understand why so many people are homeless in Austin. It's because they used to live there in, in a place, and then they, they just enjoyed Austin for what it was worth for more than, I don't know, what is it? You get 90 days to not pay rent, and then you get evicted, depending on your lease? Yeah. Usually takes about 90 days of living in Austin before you're homeless. I think all those people moved to Austin. Everyone moves to Austin with a 720 credit score and a job at Oracle or Tesla or SpaceX. They all move here, but then in three months after, you know, getting to crawl through the city or whatever, you just you lose your house. Your credit score drops to a 425. You can't get qualified for anything anymore. You do, however, have just enough money to afford a smartphone from Cricket that you charge at um, parking meters. Or you forfeit your phone for cricket and you buy a squeegee and a bucket. And then you make a killing washing people's windows. Yeah. It's okay. Just shit on the pe- just shit on the homeless people, Phil. That's what people everyone wants to hear. That's what everybody wants to hear. The other day I was smoking a CBD joint on the uh it was like a Delta 8 CBD joint or whatever and a uh, homeless guy came up to me he's like hey man can I hit that and I was like yeah man it's not weed though I know it smells like weed but this is just CBD he's like I know I'm cool I'm hip I'm down with the times anti-inflammation anti-anxiety I get it and I was like uh, yeah I was like anti-meth take a hit of this you know fine and then he tried to hand it back to me and I was like it's all yours, brother. You know, <laughs> I want to try meth once. I think I'd like to try meth once. Second hand off of a homeless person's tooth. Not the first time I want to try meth. I want to be in a lab with wires hooked up to me. I want to, I want to know what's going on. I want to, maybe it's my superpower. Maybe I'm a, I'm a super meth head. Just a thought. Then I had to realize, like, that guy, he did calm down. He hit the CBD, and then his shoulders dropped, like, six inches. It was like, and he just, boom. I had to think. I was like, wow, did that guy just, like, come down for the first time in weeks? What if he's like, oh, my God, I had a job at Oracle. Where are my wife and kids? I'm supposed to be at work right now. It's 3 p.m. on a Tuesday. Just came down. He just... He used to be somebody, and then the street just took him out. Because that's how it happens. All right, I'll stop talking about homeless people. I'm going to start talking about kolaches. Because I'm in West Texas now, everybody. Just pulled up to the the fake-ass Slovacek sign. Like, I hate that ugly piece of fake shit. It's like he he he, he built his little chevron across the, the street from a, a Texas staple. If you don't know about it, it's called the Kalachi Stop. It's in West Texas. In West, I'm pretty sure it's in West. Or West is the town that blew up from the fertilizer plant. Either way, both awesome things. Explosions, kolaches, sausage. Sign me up. Can I get a box every month? That'd be awesome. No, uh, kolaches are, um, they're awesome. They're, they're great. But this place is like a stable because there's like a huge German population, Czechoslovakian population that population that moved to this area of Texas and then that's why there's this like cultural backbone here for those baked goods and then I mean we all know the check stop that's what it's called the check stop is like we all know it and this fucking piece of fat shit like he just like saw the marketing opportunity and was like we'll name our Slova checks but he probably sounded like man we're gonna name our Slova checks daddy's oil money will pay to build us a fake check stop right across the street and i went in there last week i went in there last week i went in there last week gas 20 cents higher than the check stop beef jerky shit absolute shit it tastes like someone just sprayed smoke flavored water all over the beef nothing in it was great it felt like it felt like in the it felt like a cowboy stadium inside that's what it really felt like not even because of the prices but because of the parade of fucking marketing and overpriced goods. So a little bit of the price. Just just stacked on shelves. Don't go to Slovacek. This is my official announcement. I denounce Slovacek as any kind of gas station stop to and from Austin or Waco. Fake. 
fake. I feel the same way about Denny's. I hate Denny's. If you eat at Denny's, congratulations. You no longer have a friend in me. If you're that cheap, you might as well go have yourself a good American meal at Waffle, Waffle House. Waffle House is the apex of breakfast food places. It goes, listen here, it goes Waffle House, IHOP. McDonald's, then Denny's. <laughs> I hate Denny's so much. Ask me if I have a good reason. I don't. It's an aesthetics thing. It's always sticky. Denny's is always sticky. No matter what you do. You, if, if you fuck a Brazilian wax, just go butt-ass naked into a Denny's. First of all, no one will say anything that you're naked inside of a Denny's. People are like, oh, Waffle House is trash. You can walk in naked to a Waffle House. No, we're gonna, I'm going to look at you. I might ash my cigarette on you in a Waffle House if you come in naked. You walk into a Denny's naked, you're on par. You lay down on the floor. Right in the entrance, doesn't matter. In the kitchen, it doesn't matter. It's all the same amount of fucking stick. Better yet, lay on any dining room table, but naked, and then just rip yourself up immediately. You're going to have less hair on your whatever. Guarantee it. And I, and I guarantee you'll find the same amount of hair in your food. That's what they do. They walk by afterwards with like a, with a, like a, like a, a scraper and they peel the hair off the, the grimy tables and floors and they walk back in the kitchen and that's their seasoning. Yeah. I have very strong feelings about some, some things. Nothing important. Ask me about anything. Abortion? I don't know. I don't know, man. You know, I don't know. I don't know. I mean, it's, 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 it's your body. You, you should be able to choose to do with your body. It's, 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 it's life is a life, and it's, it's you know it's just. Uh, it's, uh, see, I have no. I have no. I do have. I'm, I'm pro-choice, but <laughs> there'd be less podcasts like this if more people were pro-choice. Just kidding. My mom tried for me for three years. Could you imagine working so hard for three years on something, getting like fertility treatments, and then 25 years later, this is what you, your investment? It's like investing back in. It's a. Uh, it's like if you invested in Arby's back in the 80s, when your your uh, your financial advisor was like, "Fuck all these Google, Yahoo, really? You want to invest in a company named Yahoo and?" So, you know, you, you don't want to invest in Google and Yahoo. Listen to those names. Arby's will always be here. And it has been. That's not a lie. Maybe Arby's is a good investment because a lot of people ask, who's keeping them open? I think it's just their investors. I recently invested in AMC and Cinemark like six months ago when the whole crowd was like, Fig, that'll bounce back. People love the movies. And then AMC did some shit this week. It went up to like $70, and that was like a 120% return, or 720% return for me. That was insane. It made a good amount of money. It paid for my gas for two weeks. <laughs> Not really. It was a little bit more, but it, it, it'll cover gas for about a month at 3,000 miles a week. So... I'm making good calls, y'all. I'm making good calls. Sorry, my arm's getting a little tired. We're at 23 minutes. I'm, I'm kind of happy with this. Um, check out, I mean, if you're watching this right now, I'm going to start booing this, uh, putting these up a lot more. D booing, booing. I'm going to start booing this a little bit. I'm going to start doing these. This is my podcast. This is uh, with Philip Garcia. There is no set. There is no setting. There is no plan. Fuck it if you ever thought I needed one. Every episode is just going to be what I deem necessary. Uh, maybe, maybe next episode will be in a Denny's. Maybe it'll just be me in a, in a cry for help from Denny's. Like I sat down as a joke to do my podcast, but I can't get up because all my clothes are stuck to the boot. I'm changing lanes. I'm doing everything I shouldn't be doing in a car right now. The only thing I could do right now is, is like have, have coffee. And on one of those little plates, too, so it's even more pretentious. Like, I have to hold the plate and the coffee. But then I wouldn't have a hand for con like uh, to do this. Let's see. Visit West. We are in West. Little check flag. All right. Well, this has been an awesome episode. I am going to have a great weekend in Austin, and hopefully y'all will get to hear from me a little bit sooner than usual. Um, content has been ebbing and flowing in my mind lately. I've been back on my, my shit. I'm in a really good headspace right now mentally, uh, realizing how much opportunity I let myself let go. 
And uh, that's going to stop. It's time to start recording everything. 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 All right, y'all. That's been with Philip Garcia. I'm your host, Philip Garcia, and I'll see y'all next time. Have a good uh, whatever the fuck time of the day you're watching this. Love y'all. Bye.